Okay, and we are live. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is Prince Safe of Awachi. I am in the city of downtown Boston, sitting inside the Ritz Carlton uh, Hotel, having my morning breakfast. And today is a special day. Uh, today, I have a live broadcast interview with Yemi Shikoni. Hello, Yemi. How are you? I am very well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Thank you so much for the time. I know how busy you are. And uh, for our audience out home uh, who are watching this from home, thank you for joining us. And this happens to be our, I think, Yemi's first uh, online live broadcast interview. So this is going to be a great experience. And for those of you who may see me a little bit blurry, we're trying to get all the kinks out of the door. So, so please bear with us. But otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and introduce you, uh, Yemi, to the world. So everybody. Yemi Shikoni is probably a, one of the most uh, successful entrepreneurs that I've met here in New England. Uh, she is the owner and director of Donahue Models and Talent, uh, Rhode Island's oldest model and talent agency. Her companies uh, book some of New England's top professional models and talent to work with many corporate giants across the region. Uh, she has over 35 years of experience in various areas, um, whether it be acting, modeling, and also theater and TV and film, but also she holds Check this out, a bachelor's degree in education, a postgraduate uh, diploma in marketing, and an MBA. That is a lot to say, Yemi. <laughs> and uh, one of, also, she's also the chief and editor of a fashion magazine called Trade Secrets, which culminates all of her passions, which is education, performing, marketing, et cetera, and so forth. So without further ado, Yemi, thank you so much. And uh, go ahead, and since I probably introduced you already, uh, tell my audience who you are and what you do. Uh, well, my name is Yemi Shikoni, and uh, as you said, I'm the owner and director of Donahue Models and Talent, which is the oldest agency in uh, Rhode Island. Um, uh, the, the, the one aspect of my life that has been constant from, you know, as far back as I can remember, has been performing, whether it be modeling, acting, et cetera, et cetera. So no matter what I did through every stage of my life, that had always been there. Um, I moved to the United States in 1999 and um, moved to Rhode Island in 2001. And when I got here, I wanted to get back to doing what I was very passionate about, which was performing. And so I started to research, you know, getting back into it. And, um, you know, ultimately I ended up modeling with my agency, Donahue Models and Talent. She was my agent in Rhode Island. And um, over the span of about three years, while I modeled for her, she also had me um, helping her out, you know, assisting her within the office, administrative work, dealing with clients. And I was not aware at the time that she'd been looking for someone that she could hand over the agency to. And so um, in 2009, one day she called me up and said, hey, kid, I want to retire. I've been looking for someone who can carry on my legacy. Would you be interested in buying the agency from me? And so she had seen in me something that, you know, I didn't know was there um, and had started to mold me to kind of just see if I did really have, you know, what it took to, to take over because this was her baby. And she wanted to make sure that when she retired, she would leave it in good hands. And I was really honored that she, um, you know, that she thought I was the one to do it. And so we talked about it and it took me almost two years to actually put everything together, financing, paperwork and everything. Um, but I purchased it from her in 2010. So I've owned it now for um, five years. And, you know, I always like to say I have fun with it. I love what I do. I couldn't imagine myself doing anything else. It's such a fun job. And I just I just have fun every day. Excellent. So tell me, what is the message behind uh, Donahue Models? Well, the biggest thing for me is, you know, because people always have this impression that models, you know, there's a lot of divas and lots of drama mm -hmm. um, and I always say it does not have to be that way um, yes we're a bunch of beautiful people there's you know <laughs> nothing we can do about that sorry but we do not have to have that mindset that we're all that in a bag of chips you know you can also be nice you can be positive you can be friendly you can be professional you can be everything that everybody else is is and still you know work this business successfully so you know when i'm looking at when i'm interviewing models that are interested in coming on board with me i'm not just looking about whether they've got a great face or a great smile or great energy i'm looking at what their personality looks like is this someone that i would be comfortable sitting down and having having a coffee with mm -hmm. so that if i'm sending them out to the client i want to make sure the client is going to have the same experience that i'm having with the models and so you know they all know you know no drama check it at the door you know, when you're coming in, let's work and let's give 110% all the time. And so, you know, I always try to make sure that we're coming to, to the plate with some integrity, with a high level of, of uh, professionalism. And I hold my models to a very high standard. 
Excellent. So if my models out there are featuring aspiring models who wish to audition for you, what are three things that you look for? Um, great presence. Um, confidence. And confidence doesn't mean you have to have what we call swag. Uh, but it just means you, you know how to carry yourself even when you don't feel that confident. You know how to fake it till you make it. Yeah. Nobody needs to know that you're, you're, you know, you're quivering in your boots, but you can, you can make it work. So, um, you know, a great personality, um, great uh, confidence, and um, a high level of discipline and a sense of hard work. Because, you know, I, I find that, you know, today we have a lot of people that have a sense of entitlement, um, you know, and I feel that we still need to work hard. You still need to work hard and accomplish what you, need, what you want to accomplish. I need to go after it. So I, I'm always looking for people that are willing to do, you know, get their hands dirty, do the hard work in order to get to that next, that next step. Excellent, excellent. Now, um, I also mentioned that you are the chief and editor of Trade Secrets magazine. Can you just tell me what is that and what content do you provide to your readers with? So Trade Secrets magazine started out, that publication has completely uh, blown all my expectations. When we started, it really was just supposed to be a little newsletter that I would send up to my models each month, you know, and we would talk about things like, you know, if you want to get a perfect smoky eye or, you know, what lipstick color should you wear or what are the trends for the coming winter? And we would also do a little spotlight on one of the models so that the other models would get to learn about their colleagues. Um, but because it's a digital magazine, I guess it, it blew, it, it just, it just grew a lot faster than I anticipated. Mm. So it's not a hard copy, it's digital only. And we're doing everything from um, skincare, health, health, wellness, uh, beauty tips, fashion style trends, um, you know, but I also sometimes I'll speak to, like I had my chiropractor write an article on the importance of posture. So everything has to do with um, fashion, entertainment, modeling. I had um, someone, a dental uh, surgeon, talk about the, the importance of the, per of the perfect smile. Um, okay. So anything to do with your personality, your look, your image, your persona, that's what we try to bring to, uh, to the magazine. And for me, it's a nice way to pull the curtain back from our industry, because what a lot of people see is, you know, the glitz and the glamour, the, the finished product. They don't realize that there's a lot of work, a lot of grunt work that goes on the back end. So sometimes we'll do an article on behind the scenes in a fashion show and the madness that goes on behind the scenes. And, you know, usually the mother walks out onto the runway and, you know, they strike a pose and you think, <laughs> oh, yeah, this looks really easy. Not yeah. necessarily. You have no oh. idea what's going on behind there. So <laughs> this is our way of, of showing the inside, the inner workings of what we do. Oh, excellent. And also education. It's, it's an educational product. Good, good, good. So now just, um, just hearing you talk, I see you have a successful career, but I also know that didn't come easy. And so was there a time when you thought you would give up on yourself? And if so, <laughs> tell us that story and give one piece of advice to future black women entrepreneurs uh, to not make the same mistake, I guess. Absolutely. You know, every now and again, even now, sometimes, you know, because it, it's a business and, you know, they always, no matter what business you are, even the big conglomerates, you'll have your peaks and valleys. You'll have the times when things are really great and, and everything's going. And then there are times when things will slow down. But mm -hmm. the, the, the toughest time for me was shortly after I purchased the agency. The time that I actually purchased the agency was the time when nobody was advising anyone to buy anything. Because this was in 2009, 2010, when I had a conversation with, with Annette Dom, the former owner. This was when the economy was at the very bottom. We, we couldn't go any further. And mm. so you know, as I was looking for financing to purchase, you know, I went from bank to bank to bank, and they were like, No, no, no. Know, she... Oh, yeah, we're, we're in a live um, broadcast interview. You want to say hello? Oh, this is, if you're, I'm so sorry. It's okay. This is That's Judy okay. here at the Ritz Carlton. She was just asking me if you were my wife. <laughs> no, no. Well, no, no beauty. No, no, no. no, no, no. I'm just telling you, just complimenting on your beauty. But anyway. Oh, I t thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so going back to what I was saying. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the economy was down in the dumps, and um, you know, so banks didn't want to talk to me about anything. They just they would they wouldn't touch me with a barge pole. Ultimately, I did find a bank that was able, you know, that was willing to do the financing, and I liquidated a lot of my stuff as well, and you know, friends, family. There yeah. was a communal effort to to make this work. Um, but even you know, after I purchased the agency, just you know, from day to day, just watching keeping an eye on the economy, wondering what's going to happen. And a lot of businesses, usually when they're, when, they're, when they're downsizing, one of the first things to go is their marketing and advertising budget. So when I'm just gearing up to say, yes, I've got this agency, I've got these models, let's do some mm -hmm. commercials, 
they're saying on the other side, no, 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 no. We can't do any of that right now. We've really got to hunker down and make things work. So I'm sitting in the office thinking, oh my God, what have I done? And I, you know, I remember many a night going to bed, my heart would literally be pounding in my chest thinking, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And you know, I'd call my mom and she'd say, how did it go today? Did you get any calls from any clients? And I'll say, no, nothing's happening. Um, you know, but one of the things my mother's always described me as is she said, I'm very resilient. And I know that to be true. So mm -hmm. I'm one of those people, once I sink my teeth into something, I don't let it go until I'm done. And so, you know, and really there was not, there was no getting out of this. It was, you know, I, I committed to it long term. So I just stuck with it and I just, you know, kept my fingers crossed, hoped and prayed. And, but what I started to do was reaching out, trying to find different things that we could be doing. So maybe not just a traditional modeling, but could I start collaborating with people as ways to either get my name out there, um, uh, market the agency, increase, uh, you know, brand, uh, you know, brand awareness. And so I focused a lot. And then I called, I called a lot of the companies to not want to introduce myself because I think a lot of them also were just kind of sitting on the sidelines thinking, all right, we knew Annette Donahue, we knew the brand, we, we trusted it. But now we've got this new person, what is she going to do? So I had, you know, uh, you know that first year, just spent the, spending the time proving, you know, that I did have the same work ethic, the same quality of, of service and, and professionalism and everything before they started to trust me and, and you know, give me those opportunities. And, um, you know, I like to think that I've, you know, won that, I've earned their trust and you know we're, we're we're doing well now. So the the biggest the biggest advice that I give to anyone is, it will be tough. It is never easy. If you if you know if you want easy, you need to you know go work go work a day job, which is not a bad thing. But at least you're not dealing with the stress. You're not dealing with the stress. But if you choose to own a business, if you get into it, you need to, you need you need to have nerves of steel because there'll be many a night many a day when you just wonder and and second guess yourself. Um, but it's, it's trusting that you made the right decision. If it feels good in your core and, it, and you're passionate about what it is ab ab about the business that you're pursuing, you know, you just have to be patient and keep working it until it works for you. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate this. And so all my audience out there, please take to heart what she says. Be resilient, you know, stick with it and just, you know, um, don't give up on yourself. And that's, you just said it perfectly. So, right. Uh, you inspired me today, you know, especially what I'm doing now in my business. So, thank you. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, right now, I'm going to write this little, quick little text to our audience and see if they have any cues, but I still have some cues on my own. Let me just finish this up. Okay. Let's go away. Because we got two viewers on our, <laughs> two viewers on my um, okay. uh, live broadcast, which is good. I like this. Sure. So, excellent. So, now, let's go ahead and... Um, other questions. Oh, the biggest question is probably this. Uh, what is it like to be a black woman entrepreneur? <laughs> it's interesting that you, and, and that's a great question. I, right. I, believe it or not, when I first bought the agency, I was very nervous about being a woman and a woman of color mm -hmm. um, in the position that I was. And I was very concerned about whether, as I introduce myself to people or, or the potential businesses, whether or not they would take me seriously or believe that I had the chops to do to do this. So for the longest time, I didn't have any of my information online. I didn't have this. I know there's a little video on the website right now where I'm talking, but I didn't do that for the first two years. And I wouldn't, I, I tried not to disclose. I don't, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but I tried not to disclose who I was because I was nervous that it might affect the impression that people have and their decision as to whether or not they wanted to work with me. Now I've done this. So I'm very comfortable. You know, I've proven right. myself. I think I've done a good enough job. So, you know, you either come with me or you don't, you know, I, I, I've proven myself. But back then I was very scared wow. that my gender and my race might impact the response, the reaction that I got back. And as a person of color, you know that as well. You know, people usually make their first impressions based on what they see. Yeah. And, um, you know, and the other thing is sometimes I've had friends say, oh, my God, yeah, you know, you're so beautiful. But yes, you, yeah, you're so smart. And they say it as if those things are exclusive, like you shouldn't be, you know, good looking and smart. You know, so that it's almost like they're surprised that you've got <laughs> <laughs> that you've got oh. so you know so it's you know none of those were bad it's just that i guess that the the the, the impression that i i may i may have been the one projecting these this ideology on them they may not necessarily have been thinking that but those were the fears that that i had 
was that, you know, how would they perceive me as, as a woman of color running this business? And will they have the same um, expectation that they would had I been a male, um, a, a white male, if that makes mm -hmm. any that makes any sense? Yes. No, that's very interesting, especially in that, uh, especially, uh, special, sorry, especially in that field. So I'm always curious, you know, one being gender, also one of color. I wonder how you balance that. And it's very, you know, I mean, it's still around, you know, you, guys, you still have some ignorance in the world, so people, a little bit, especially with a name like Yemi Shikoni, <laughs> right. they're very, yeah. you know, like a very prominent, you know, I mean, being the owner of a very prominent uh, model agency, so I can understand. <laughs> <laughs> that so, is, that's very true, yeah. So actually, it kind of leads into my next question. Uh, what is, or not what is, what does uh, Yemi Shikoni mean? Okay, so I'll start with Yemi. Yemi is short for Olu Yemisi, which is my full name, Olu Yemisi. Mm -hmm. And that means God honors me more and more every day. Um, Shikoni um, means work hard and you'll succeed. And I remember growing up, my father would always, I, I went to boarding school, and my father, whenever it was time to go off to school, you know, he would sit me down and he'd give me advice and he'd say, remember what your last name means, work hard and you succeed. And, and that always stayed, I mean, he's passed on now, but, you know, that yeah. always stayed with me. And it's always been my mantra. And that's just the belief that, you know, if you work hard, you will be successful at it. You can't expect things to just drop into your, into your lap. Um, you need to earn. You need to earn. And there's nothing wrong with starting at the, from the ground up. Mm -hmm. um, in today's world where there's a lot of instant gratification, um, you know, so... You know, you know, and God bless them, but not as if, you know, some people are getting lucky and they're just kind of going from zero to a hundred in, in no time at all, you know, but there's still those of us for the most part that still need to, you know, start from the ground and, and work your way up. And so my last name has always resonated with me and it's always been part of my, my personal philosophy, so to speak. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, um, excellent. Well, we have at least, um, at least 10 more minutes before we end this uh, interview. And so I have a fun question to ask you, uh, which is yeah. this. Uh, what are important items you carry in your purse that you feel that every woman entrepreneur should carry? <laughs> oh, okay. Number one, your lipstick. <laughs> okay. And I'm not saying that from a vanity standpoint, because, you know, as, as a, one of the things I pride myself on is, is um, putting a lot of thought and effort into the way I look every day, because, you know, good or bad, People's first impression is based on what they see. Like, for instance, you know, as a as a as a woman, um, this may sound a little weird, but whenever I meet a person, one of I don't look down at their shoes right away. But one of the things you notice is their shoes, and you know, the appearance of the shoe kind of wow. tells you a little bit about who they are because it means that they pay attention to detail. I still use wax polish to polish my shoes every day. I, um, I sit on the floor after I've gotten dressed and I polish my shoes and I buff them, I shine them. So, you know, that's the expectation that I have when I'm, when I see someone. So, you know, it's the same for a woman with her lipstick. Even if you don't have anything on, just put a dash of color on and you're good to go. So for me, because sometimes at the end of my workday, I'm dashing off to a networking event. I'm going to something going on in the Rhode Island um, area or sometimes in Massachusetts fashion shows, networking events. So I always need to make sure that I'm looking put together. So no matter how raggedy I feel, no matter how bad my day, if I whip out my lipstick and I slap on some, some lips, some color, I feel it puts a pep in my step. Um, the other thing you should always have are your business cards. I cannot tell you how many times I go to events and talking to someone and I say, all right, let's exchange cards. And they'll say, Oh, I, I didn't think to bring it because it's, even if it's a social event, mm. even when I'm going to fashion shows, I'm in my gown or my fancy dress, I've got my clutch. The first thing I'll grab would be a handful of business cards and I slip that in because you never know who you're going to meet. So, you know, between your, your, your lipstick and your cell and your, and your, your uh, business cards. Oh, and of course your cell phone, you should always have your cell phone and you should have your calendar on your, your calendar and your to-do list on your cell phone at all times. So those would be the things that I would, I would highly recommend everybody have. Okay, great, great. So we're going to wrap this uh, show up and um, if you don't mind telling us uh, some of your uh, upcoming projects that you're doing um, this week. Yes, yes, yes. So one of the things I'm really excited about, um, next weekend, November 6th, 7th, and 8th, Comic-Con, Rhode Island Comic-Con is taking place at the Convention Center in Rhode Island. And uh, I'm collaborating with Co uh, Comic-Con for the first time um, this year. Uh, we're coordinating a fashion show, which is going to be anime, cosplay, steampunk, inspired so we wow. have these amazing oh my goodness this is it's it's i've never done a show like this before 
And uh, I'm, I'm so excited. We had our fittings on Sunday at the office and the, the designers were there. And the models themselves, you know, the, the eyes were like saucers. They were like, oh, my God. They were so excited at the pieces that they're going to wear. Mm -hmm. um, but that's going to be happening on November 8th at the convention um, center in Rhode Island. Um, and then the other thing that I do, um, and I have a third division that we didn't get to talk about called Lights, Fashion, Philanthropy, where we work with nonprofit organizations. And so every third, every first Thursday of the month, we do a little fashion show at one of the restaurants in Rhode Island, um, in, Pro in North Providence. And um, any monies raised from that event gets donated to that nonprofit. So we're featuring a nonprofit and we're also featuring a local boutique or, um, or fashion designer that happens every month. So those are the two immediate things that I can um, think of, but I'm always, I'm always looking for what's the next thing, what's the next thing we could be doing. Excellent, all right. Okay, and then uh, what can my audience follow you in your work? Um, well, my Facebook page is usually the first place to go, facebook.com slash Shikoni, my last name, S-E-K-O-N-I, um, DonahueModels.com, um, TradeSecretsMag.com, LightsFashionPhilanthropy.com. Um, and if you go to any of those, you'd always be able to find all the other social media links, but I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Google+, LinkedIn, Pinterest, there are too many. <laughs> I said, you need to stop making any, no more social media, no more new social media apps. Okay. Uh, well, but there's, there's plenty of ways to find me. All right. Well, that's our, the end of the show. Uh, thank you so much, Yemi, for uh, taking the time to answer my questions and also giving words of inspiration to uh, young women entrepreneurs out there who wants to do what you're doing. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's been fun. It's been fun as well. So, guys, um, for, if you wish to follow me, uh, you can go to my website where I, I am a student but also an entrepreneur, which is at livelikeanentrepreneur.com. Uh, you can check out my fan page, which is livelikeanentrepreneur.com. You can also go to my other fan page, which is princessdailyjournal.com. So as you can see, I'm everywhere. Um, but uh, the best way to reach me is on uh, my fan page. And um, uh, next week, I'll probably interview someone else. But just keep following my fan page for what's the latest, whether it be um, interviewing a celebrity like, such as uh, Yemi or going out to have breakfast at a four-star restaurant. So anyways, guys, thank you so much. Um, leave any comments below and until next time be good and stay classy. See you happy. Bye. Thank Bye. you. <laughs>